She puts the wow, mmm, yum, into words. It's the Lafayette Food Junkie herself on News Talk 96.5 KPL. Welcome back to the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPL. I'm your host, Tiffany Deku. Here we talk about all the food happenings around Acadiana. If you like food, tune in. You might learn something new uh, post Thanksgiving coma recovery is what I would call tonight. I would also like to say happy birthday to the Lafayette Food Junkie radio show. Mm -hmm. Today marks our four year anniversary of being on the on the air. It's hard to believe that the show started four years ago. um, The Sunday after Thanksgiving, Uh, we planned that on purpose because, you know, Thanksgiving is one of the biggest food eating, you know, eating holidays. And we wanted to ce- celebrate that. And I remember our first guest was Chef Pat Waters from Vermilionville, Cafe Vermilionville at the time. And I remember leaving that show, uh, being really upset at how I did because I felt like I did horrible. And I was just like, I don't know if I can do this. Like, I felt like I was really bad. And I remember that Bernie and Bernie Bernadette Lee and Brandon Como and I believe Nathan Pike also got on on this. We did like a conference call, um, and then I believe that sh- uh, Chef Zach Dowies was my co-host at the time. I think he was in on the conference call too, and they were kind of like, "It only gets better from here." <laughs> like your your first show, you know, is always it's your first time on the air. You're gonna be nervous. And it only gets better from here. You have to start somewhere. Right. Now, I still get post-show jitters four years <laughs> into it. Like, I still get nervous before I go on the air. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, it's I'm incredible, incredibly thankful to all of you out there um, who listen to the show and have kept us going. Uh, the show has been canceled twice. I feel like our show is a cat. And it has multiple lives, and we've gone through two of them already. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, part of the reason why they put us back on the air is because people emailed the station and were upset that we weren't on the air. So thank you to the to the many of you out there who listen to the show. Um, I know my dad listens every week. He's my number one fan. Uh, we also have Dave, who's been on the show. David's been on the show, and he um, is also a, a great fan. He was one of the people that wrote the letter to the station, you know, uh, when they canceled the show. And I'm just, I'm very thankful to whoever listens to the show. I know a lot of delivery drivers listen to the show, pizza delivery drivers, uh, waiter, delivery drivers, listen to the show. Thank you um, for for listening to us while you work. And truck drivers, anyone out there in your car right now listening on the way home, Rob Kirp- Kirkpatrick listens to the show. He said he goes to his family's house like in uh, Church Point every Sunday. And usually when they're driving back to Lafayette is when the show's on. So he listens. So thank you so much to everyone out there who listens to the show and keeps us going. Awesome. And yeah, I don't know what we have planned for in the coming year. More food talk, probably more Tiffany stumbling over words and uh, general hilariousness. <laughs> Joining tonight as guest co-host is Terry Duga. Uh, great, he is with the Greater Iberia Chamber of Commerce. Always in on the clutch. Like yeah. whenever we had a last minute guest co-host cancellation and terry was very gracious to fill in i'm racking up a bill yeah that i'm gonna be sending you at the oh, end of the year and okay just a, a quick little invoice it's fine oh okay yeah well yeah. you know i don't do this for free i expect chicken nuggets oh yeah. chick-fil-a <laughs> exactly we, you know what <laughs> being that the show's on sundays and chick-fil-a is not open on sundays That's fine. I'll i take feel it on like Monday. we need a nugget platter uh, yeah, in just... here <laughs> That would be nice. Maybe we can get like a special order. We'll get day. like chicken nuggets and a <laughs> bottle of wine. That would be beautiful. That would be a Absolutely very interesting boring. show. Okay, so th- Thanksgiving this past Thursday. Yes. Uh, what were you, what did you do? What were your plans? Uh, I ended up all over the place to be honest. Really? My uh, all of my almost all like almost all of my family lives in Lafayette, so you can imagine. Uh, you know, I was running around town. I started off at my mom's. 
And then I went to one grandparent's house, and then I went to another one, and then I went to my uncle's house, and then I went to my aunt's house. It was like a whole thing. Like, uh, it was great. And then I, you know, hung out with some friends at the very end of the day. So it was really, really nice. But I was exhausted after that Thursday because I, I left my apartment at probably like 9 a.m. and didn't oh, wow. get home until after 11. Did you do so. any Black Friday shopping? Yes. I did you get Target. some deals? I did not, I did not go for line? myself. I was in the line at Target on the north side. Uh, my cousin wanted a, a TV. My grandmother wanted a TV. Um, and then they wanted, like, you know, some sheet sets and stuff. So I ended up just getting in line with them to help them pick up TVs and stuff like that. But I did not purchase anything for myself. I did not partake in any Black Friday shopping. <laughs> I did mine online. Like, oh, I, yeah, I yeah, did yeah. I did my shopping online. So you're going to do the Cyber Monday thing, too? Yeah. Well, a lot of the places now, like, start their stuff early. Yeah. Like, they do yeah. Black Friday, and then they do Cyber Monday early. And so they, they have, like, huge sales right now. Yeah. And then around the end of the year, they're going to have more huge yeah. sales. So I've kind of been, like, shopping a little every day. Mod Cloth, uh, which is where I get a lot of my dresses from yeah. broke up with black fridays this year oh. so typically their sales would start um thursday mm -hmm. and then go into the weekend and then they would have cyber mondays but they shut down their site wow. and you couldn't even get on it and so they they had cyber monday which yeah. started today so I, I bought some dresses that I had been wearing. Like, I actually, mean, you my... You gotta fight against that consumerism. Man. Right. Well, it was nice. And they were actually, like, <laughs> doing a thing where they were, like, nominating people to, like, give money back. And yeah. so it was it was nice. But I did get my holiday dress that has um, holiday desserts all over it that I'm planning <laughs> on wearing. Looking like a sweet treat. Right. I'm wearing it for my work Christmas party and then also for christmas yeah. this year so i'm gonna get a lot of uses out of it that's gonna be awesome so i ended up getting that and then i'll probably i've been waiting on amazon because i'm wanting so i always buy cookbooks this mm -hmm. time of year i kind of get obsessed with cookbooks i wait until the end of the year that's a good time to buy them. yeah a lot yeah. of them come out this time of year and last year my secret santa at work got me um anthony bourdain's had just came out mm -hmm. so they bought me that and this year i asked for thug kitchen <laughs> Have you heard of Thug no, Kitchen? Okay, so this? Thug Kitchen started. <laughs> um, it's like, so it's Thug Kitchen. It says, eat like you give up. Beep. <laughs> Just imagine what the other wor the word uh -huh. is that is yeah. right there. And it started as a food blog, and it's a vegetarian vegan oh. food blog. Right. So it's okay. all like vegan, vegetarian recipes, uh -huh. but it's like really funny like in it's a best-selling cookbook yeah so i asked them for that this year so i'm hoping that they're gonna get me that fingers crossed right but i'm waiting until tomorrow to see if amazon kind of does something special for books because right now it's only like five dollars off yeah and, that's messed up and free shipping which free shipping is something yeah, but i mean free shipping is great but um, um i don't right. know cyber money i'm sure will be better for amazon so my thanksgiving changed so many times. Originally, I was supposed... My parents were in Shreveport. I was going to meet them halfway in Alexandria. We were going to have Thanksgiving at a casino. Uh -huh. Like, that was plan one. Then they ended up going to work a job in Gonzales. So they were going to be closer. So I was like, okay, well, we can come here and go to li Little Big Cup like we normally do. Mm -hmm. They were like, okay. Then we found out one of my relatives who lives out of state was going to be in town at our relatives that live in Simsport mm -hmm. and we were going to possibly eat there. So that was what we were going to do. Then we found out they weren't going to be eating Thanksgiving dinner till four o'clock in the afternoon. I had to work the next day. So it was going to be way too late. Yeah. So we were like, that's not going to work. Go back to a little big cup plan. Well, I, <laughs> I messaged them, uh, message a little big cup Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I said, do you have any reservations for one o'clock? Because they, they, you know, you needed reservations. Yeah. And they said, no, sorry. Like the only openings we have are outside, which oh, wow. we were having normal winter weather and it was yeah. going to be super cold. Yeah. So I said, do you have any other openings? And they said, no, unfortunately we don't. Oh, wow. Come to find out they had booked up two weeks prior so <laughs> lesson learned that if you are planning to go and dine at Little Big Cup two weeks prior, 
you need to make those reservations as soon as possible because they book up. Like I mean, everyone is so knows. Good, yeah, and it's so it's good. really good. Like yeah. they do oh their brunch and then the stuff that they do for Thanksgiving is so good. So we ended up going to Crawfish Town. Crawfish mm. Town was like reservations recommended. I called them. They said we're not taking any more reservations. Wow. However, if you come at one o'clock, it should be fine. I thought they closed at four o'clock. They closed at two o'clock. Oh. So we got there and they were still packed. There was like a line wrapped around because it was a buffet. Wow. And we got in at like 1.15 um, and they shut down the buffet at two o'clock. But we were stuffed. I mean, we went we, we, we went back in the line twice, mm-hmm. but it was so good. They had like fried turkey. They had really delicious ham, uh, fried catfish. They had uh, this so good pork gravy with oh, rice, wow. uh, cornbread dressing, really good rolls. Like I was so full. Like it was <laughs> nice. Yeah. But the only thing that sucks about that is that, you know, you take your nap and you wake up and you want more. No leftovers. And I have nothing. Nothing. So I went back since my parents were in town. Uh, I went to their house at like 10 o'clock that night and heated up leftover Chinese that my dad had had. <laughs> and so that was like my second meal uh-huh. of the day was like leftover Chinese and barbecue. Oh, wow. In fact, my dad had got the barbecue from Don's and he was like, oh, yeah, Don's is a fusion restaurant. Uh, he went to no, he went to Best Stop. He got mm-hmm. the meat from Best Stop. He said Best Stop is a fusion restaurant. Now they're doing barbecue, um, Cajun smoked meats. And Chinese. And, oh, I was, and I was like, okay. stop the madness. They're not. He, yeah, he okay. was just like I, saying I, that because. I was about to be like, I'm not familiar. Yeah, no, <laughs> I looked at him like he was crazy. Like, I was like, do you really think that that? I was like, no. So I had like smoked meats from Best Stop and Chinese food. I mean, and it was not, delicious. Honestly. All right. We're going to take our first break. And when we come back, we're going to be talking more post Thanksgiving food. So come back to us. It's the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPL. Welcome back to the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPL. I'm your host, Tiffany Deku. Joining as guest co-host tonight is Terry Duga. Uh, we've been recapping Thanksgiving. We're going to talk real yeah. quickly about desserts. I made a pumpkin cheesecake. It was a no-bake recipe that I found, and I found it to be a little, like, when I cut into it, it kind of just fell apart. It was delicious, but it fell apart but it's in the freezer now, and so it's wonderful. Yeah, let's just firm it up a little and bit. And you had key lime pie for the first yeah, time. Yeah, I had key lime pie for the first time. One of my, my great aunt made some, and I was just like, this is delightful. I mean, it, but like I was telling you, everybody kept looking at me like I was crazy because I'd never had it before. And I'm like, when does one have key lime pie? When you go you to know? Key West. <laughs> exactly. Like, you know, I'm not at, you know, the Copacabana. I'm not anywhere in particular. So why would I just randomly have key lime pie? But it was good. I mean, and then apparently it was like a no-bake recipe as well. Like she just like mixed it all up and put it in the refrigerator to set. So I was like, why not? And you had the Patty LaBelle yes. uh, sweet I potato had the pie. Patty LaBelle sweet potato pie from Walmart. And it was good. It lives up to the hype. It does. Like I like I was saying, you know, I've heard conflicting reports. I've had some people say it ain't that great. Some people say it's all right. And to me, like, it was really good for like a store bought mass production pie like it like was like it had that like spice to it but it wasn't like overpowering the you know sweet potato was sweet but it wasn't like you know that intense kind of like I said you know like mass produced super sweet foolishness like it was really really good and the dough was really well done I just was like this is great. Patty LaBelle, you got my stamp of approval, girl. I'm going to have to, I saw them and then I immediately thought of the video. <laughs> yeah. And, and then I was like, of the eh. guy just singing. Yeah. I so know. I just kind of passed it up. I did it in this way. So are you still eating Thanksgiving leftovers? No, we're done. You're done. We cleared it over it. Uh, I, I didn't take any home or anything because I ate on Thanksgiving. This is embarrassing to say it on live air, but like I ate a uh, Thanksgiving dinner probably about four five times that day uh because like i said i was out of the house all day i ate at my mom's i ate at my grandmother's ate at my other grandmother's ate it everywhere so uh once we were done with that and then we had a family get together on yesterday we had a family get together yesterday and they did gumbo so we had gumbo and 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 all the you know trimmings so i had gumbo yesterday so today i you know just ate whatever i could find at home and then uh 
my grandfather fried some chicken. Nice. That too. Uh, do you get creative and in, in redoing, morphing the leftovers into different things? Oh, yeah. Or? When I was a kid, my brother and I used to get the uh, sweet Hawaiian rolls. Oh, yeah. And we would, like, do, like, we didn't even, know, like, I mean, now on all the, like, little videos on Facebook, they, like, have everybody splitting them in half. But my brother and I were doing that way before it was cool. <laughs> and uh, we would, like, split it in half. And then we'd do, like, turkey and mashed potatoes and cornbread dressing and all of that. And we'd put it. And then we'd wrap it in foil and put it in the oven. And then we'd have, like, our little, like, turkey Thanksgiving leftover sandwiches. My favorite thing in the whole wide world is to take the leftover rolls, like the homemade rolls, yeah. slice them, make a little turkey sandwich with the cranberry sauce on it. Like, cranberry sauce and turkey on a sandwich is just yummy. It's so And then good. make, like, a grilled cheese. Sometimes maybe <laughs> if you have, like, the macaroni and cheese, you yeah. can make, like, a little panini and, like, See, like, my favorite combination together. is, like, the cornbread dressing and macaroni and cheese. Like, together, for some reason, it tastes like it's the best taste in the world. Like, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It's just so good, which is why, like, whenever somebody doesn't eat cornbread dressing or even rice dressing, for that matter, I'm like, why not? What is the matter with Which you? brings me to a topic that came up this this Thanksgiving that I want to talk about, and it's Cajun cornbread dressing versus Southern cornbread dressing, yeah. which you did not even know there was a difference. I did not. So I <laughs> grew up with cornbread dressing that my grandmother made it's made with chicken stock she normally like cooks a chicken in it um and it has like green onions onions bell pepper garlic sage you know it's like a traditional cornbread dressing yeah not my favorite like not my favorite when i started going to thanksgiving with my ex-husband's family and that lived here and are from here his mom made cornbread dressing which I was absolutely in love with. Like, it was delicious. Yeah. And all it is is the cornbread dressing with the mix that you would make rice dressing with. Instead of using the rice, you use the cornbread, maybe a yeah. little chicken stock. Super easy. Yeah. So from then on, that's how I made my cornbread dressing. And I remember before one of my grandmothers passed, I made it for her, and she loved it. Which for her to give you a compliment was like <laughs> the biggest thing ever. But she was like, I don't like say, you know, she's like, I don't like traditional. So I like this. Yeah. Which brings me to the cornbread dressing at Crawfish Town, which was like the Cajun style cornbread dressing, which I absolutely love. Mm -hmm. And it was delicious. And I ate That's a ton of it. And my dad hated it because he's like, no, I like how your mama makes her cornbread dressing. So we were talking about it. Yeah. You didn't even know that there was this difference. I kind. didn't. I mean, like I said, like it, it wasn't that I necessarily didn't know that there was a difference. I just didn't know that people in Louisiana made it that kind of traditional way. Because, I mean, like I don't even know anybody down here that like actually stuffs it inside of the turkey. No, I don't think anyone you know, does like, that. I don't, yeah. like, so I remember, you know, watching Christmas movies and, and Hallmark movies and everything where like, you know, they would have kind of this turkey with like this stuffing pour. And even the stovetop. Box, I think, still has, like, right. the turkey But my grandmother everything. does cook her chicken in the dressing. Yeah, I mean, like, and I know some people put, like, apples in it and, like, stuff like that. Like, there's all kinds of things. But to me, down here, I always thought that it was, like, the you know, the dressing mix with the cornbread. And you mix it together. And you put it in the oven. You bake it for a minute. And there you go. You're, like, all set and ready to go. Uh, and to me, it it's better. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's just because, it of, you know, better. You, I I'm, grew up with I'm that. I'm going I don't to know. agree with you that it is better. I love it. I don't like sage. I don't like the chunky vegetables in my dressing. Yeah, I, I like, like the Cajun style cornbread dressing that. better. So I, mean, I think it's I just one of those things you. of like, you know, Louisiana being from here and, and being down here, it, there are certain things that we just do better. And one of them is the cornbread dressing. But y'all can't make biscuits or barbecue. So, no. you know, there are some good things to say about <laughs> the northern and fry fried fish. Because I'm, I'm, it's really, I kind of, I'm getting about? over my fried fish aversion. I don't like the way a lot of places here, it's like super thin and like it tastes like you're, it's like leather, like biting into the fish. Like if it, if you can do, if I can find the places that have like chunk, delicious, flaky fish, I like it like that. But mm. I feel like fried fish in North Louisiana is better. Um, 
You're barbecue is better. To prove Biscuits are better. So <laughs> I'm just, you know, I'm from North Louisiana, so I'm not going to let you talk. The, the dressing is better sure. here. Rice and gravy <laughs> is amazing here. You know, gumbo. <laughs> like, you can't have everything. <laughs> okay. I'm, okay. All right. I'll give you those couple I've, of things. I've it's come fine. to the decision that Acadiana <laughs> cannot do everything amazingly. You can't take everything You from can't her. take everything for three things. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> like fine. everything okay. else, just sure. three. Have your it's, three. It's okay. Have your three. What are some of your must-have holiday dishes? Um, uh, Green bean casserole. Yes. Is the number one. Do you put cheese in it? I do not. That is gross. So they had some at Crawfish Town that had Velveeta cheese in it. And I actually do make che- put cheese in mine, and it was delicious. I don't know how I feel about green beans and cheese. That just doesn't. It's like it's jive well it's with good. me. I don't I'm know. just gonna tell you that it's. Uh, I put smoked sausage in mine. Ooh, yeah. okay, that's a little different. Uh, and it's normally a hit whenever I make it and bring it to like potlucks and stuff. Uh, Do you know what makes me super angry? Like I'll see the people posting on social media and they're like, "Not made with a can green bean casserole." Come on, it's. Time it saves time yeah. and it's probably and it just as good. Tastes good. Maybe it has a little less sodium. Yeah. Like I mean, but like it's Thanksgiving. Are you really worried about sodium at that point? Right. Like it tastes delicious. First off, the canned like uh mushroom, cream of mushroom with garlic in it. I don't know if you've ever had that one. I have not. Is amazing. It's at Walmart, it's at Super One. I bought it at both places. Use that, some smoked sausage, some green beans out of the can. Uh, you know, and then the little like onion string situation right. on top the with like some onions. butter. Like, it's just so good. It's so good. If you have the time to make it from scratch, more power exactly. to you. Exactly. God bless. Go go with God. But-, but I know that normally when I'm making it, I have no room because my grand um, my grandmother has taken control of the oven. In exactly. fact, this year for Christmas. I'm making a lot of things in a slow cooker. Like we're li- literally getting an outlet. I'm borrowing. I'm bringing my slow cooker from home. I'm borrowing my mom's. I may borrow my grandmother's. Like, and we're getting an outlet, and I'm putting everything in a slow cooker Line to cook. Up. Yeah, because she has control over the oven. So the stovetop don't know. Yeah, can't Just not, don't not happen. So the can variety. Works better. Also, with traveling, it's, it's a little yeah. easier. But I mean, honestly, like, I mean, you remember that show, like, Sandra Lee's Semi Homemade? Yeah. Like, I'm like, first off, ain't nobody got time to be sitting here making things from scratch all the time. I'm sorry. Like, I get it. You know, if you have the time for it, if you have the space for it. I mean, like, my grandparents, for instance, their house is much larger than mine. They have two ovens. Like, you know, so things being made from scratch works better there. And plus, like, my great aunt aunt and uncle live, like, directly next to them. So we can use their kitchen, too. And, like, it's a collaborative effort. But at the same time, like, you know, for me in my 500-square-foot apartment, you know, that's not going to happen. Right. It's not going to happen. And it tastes just as good. It's made with just as much love. <laughs> so poo-poo on you for sitting here and, and wanting everything to be, you know, slaved away to be created. Like, I'm not doing that. All right. And on that note, we're going to take another break. So come back to us. <laughs> it's the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPL. News Talk 96.5 KPL. Welcome back to the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPL. I'm your host, Tiffany Deku, and we've been talking with Terry Duga, who works with the Greater Iberia Chamber of Commerce. So if you could plan out your perfect holiday spread, what would it entail? Like, can it be anything? Yeah. Oh, man, that's hard. Uh, I think it, mainly it would just be like recipes from family and friends. Like uh, any particular dishes. Yeah, like so it'd be, I would do the green bean casserole because I like mine the best. Uh, I would do my aunt's crawfish etouffee because hers is the best. Uh, I would do my grandfather's smothered chicken because his smothered chicken is amazing. Uh, my friend Grace makes these like snickerdoodle cookies with like this like cream cheese in the middle. And those are pretty great. So I would do those. And then I would do, like, sweet dough pies from this man at my grandparents' church. Like, he's always selling them whenever you walk out. And they're amazing. So I would do those. Uh, I got a list. That's a, that's, that's, that's a good start. So <laughs> mine would be, like, either fried turkey or the turkey roll that I made for Christmas last year that was wrapped in bacon. Oh, and then the ham that I made in the slow cooker last year. I would, it would definitely involve that. Or my dad's brisket. Because my dad makes a bomb biscuit. Oh, 
brisket. He can't make biscuits. He's going to hate me <laughs> for saying that. Brisket. Um, macaroni and cheese. Mm. So in lieu of green bean casserole, if I'm making macaroni and cheese, I typically would do like a sauteed green bean dish that has like almonds and, and maybe like some garlic on it to mm. kind of trick myself into thinking that it's a little lighter. <laughs> um, oh, and wellness. <laughs> mashed potatoes and gravy. Yes, of course. Not a rice and gravy, mashed potatoes and gravy, and then homemade rolls. So See, that- I always have an issue with mashed potatoes and gravy because, like, it just depends on who's making them, you know, and, and, and all of that. Like, I had, I had mashed potatoes a couple years ago that had a whole head of roasted garlic in it, and Ooh. those were to die for. That sounds amazing. Like, they were amazing. I but love like, mashed potatoes. You know, a lot of times mashed potatoes ends up, no matter... And I love some of the people that have made me mashed potatoes, but a lot of times it just ends up being like the soggy, wet potato. So, so a good mashed potatoes should only have butter and salt and pepper mm-hmm. in it, or like garlic or something. Yeah. But you shouldn't need to add if you need. You may need to add cream to it, but really, it just needs yeah, butter. Potatoes should, like are delicious, and we won't talk about the amount of butter. But it, it just needs better. But like, uh, once again, it's the holidays. Right. You are going to put on weight. I think I just need everybody to accept that. I have so many people around me who are like, I need to be conscious and I need to like go to the gym. I'm like, you live in Southwest Louisiana. You are dead set between two of the most biggest holidays in this area. Just accept it. You're going to put on 20 pounds on the first. You can head back to Reds. Or you can head back to Snap or wherever you need to go and you can get going. Yeah, I'm just, it's, it's, it's like that. It's just mashed potatoes <laughs> and gravy, rolls, like homemade rolls, mm-hmm. uh, not from a can cranberry sauce, like made over the stove. Cranberries, let's, let me talk about that for a minute. We were talking about canned stuff. Yeah. Okay, this is one instance where take a little bit more of effort, and by more effort, I mean like literally maybe 10 minutes mm-hmm. because all you have to do is take a bag of cranberries put a cup of sugar in it, heat it up until the cranberries are popping and let it cool. And bam, you got cranberry sauce. I've and never it is had delicious. Fresh cranberry sauce before, I don't think. It is the I've only, ever only had, like, way. The can. It's so much better than a can. Like that is the one instance where I would be like, yeah, don't use that can. Make some cranberry sauce. You want to get fancy? Add a little orange zest in there. <laughs> you know, you can you can get a little creative with it. But it is better <laughs> than the can cranberry sauce and then for dessert it would have to be like a chocolate pie mm. like my mom makes this really great hershey's pie um which is so easy to make so that a slice of pecan pie the bad thing about pecan pie is like you can only have one slice because it's so sweet yeah yeah it's like diabetes but it's so good it is it's Those pecans on top yeah like, if you can get like a good one like rich nutty flavor it's like oh, so man, delicious like that roasted deliciousness oh. and then my cousin growing up and i have the recipe it doesn't really have a name it was just like strawberry dessert but it's mm-hmm. it's technically probably like a strawberry trifle and in my family like people would fight over it like it became, and I'm not kidding you that I've made this for other gatherings and people love it. And I had, pe- I had a guy kiss me <laughs> that it was so good. I had like people coming up to me and were just like, this is the most amazing thing that I've tasted. Yeah. We called it inappropriate things that I can't say on the air. <laughs> it's just, it's really good. Yeah. So that for a dessert too, for the holidays would, would be on my perfect holiday spread. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's one of those things of, I like, I just love food so much that a perfect holiday spread would just be unrealistic. It really would. It'd just be all over the place. Uh, but I mean... You know, that being said, not saying that my family does kind of overdo it during the holidays when it comes to how many different things get made. Right. Um, Which is fine. I mean, you know, it's uh, fine for me because I just get to eat. (laughs) Uh, But my grandmother, she's kind of getting to that point where she's like, I'm not going to be doing this forever. Y'all need to figure it out. And unfortunately, my mom and her sisters are kind of, they all can cook. Doesn't necessarily mean that they want to. So... 
So you're going to, is what you're saying that you're going to start cooking? Yeah. My cousins and I have, we've discussed it. We've kind of given them a a time limit. We're like, okay, maybe if y'all can take like the next two years, then we can start after that. Uh, Because we're all just kind of like, you know, now all of the kids are getting to that point where we're like buying homes or, you know, having kids of our own and living on our own and things of that nature. So we just need a little bit more time to get kind of settled in that before... Uh, we start hosting holidays at at our respective homes. So, I'm 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 looking forward to it because it's going to be fun to see who attempts what and comes up with what. But it'll be cool. I really I think next year I'm considering doing like a friendsgiving so I can cook. I really wanted to cook this year, but my parents were like, "No, it's just us. That's like too much work." Yeah. And I was like, "No." I'm kind of doing it for selfish reasons. I want leftovers. Yeah. But I was just like, fine, you know, it's it's fine. <laughs> but I like I after cooking Christmas dinner last year and I that was one of the most I was so proud of that meal. Like mm-hmm. it was just everything came out great. Everyone loved it. It just it was it was a moment for me and yeah. For me, that's now ingrained in my mind of what the holidays are like. So it's like I want to cook for my family and friends, and I want them to enjoy this. So I am I really want to cook. Yeah. So maybe next year I may just do like a Friendsgiving, and people can bring stuff, and I can cook a few meal, few dishes, and we can kind of do it. So that way, you know, I can get that feeling and then also have leftovers. I'll be waiting for my invitation. Okay. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you can put it on a stop 13 on the mass exactly. amount of stops. I mean, well, uh, like, you know, I've, I've never had to do that before. You, normally it's like I'd go to, you know, my mom's, my dad passed away, but like I'll go to my mom's and then like I'll do like each grandparent's house because both sets of grandparents are still living. Well, my grandfather passed away earlier this year, but like my grandmother's still living and then my dad's parents are both still living. So like I normally do those two and then just let whatever family members I run into at those two places be the people I see. But I mean, this year it was like people just kept calling and asking where I was and Stuff like that. So, like, I mean, it was great, and I loved every minute of it, but it was exhausting. Speaking of leftovers, Bon Appetit thinks that the best storage containers for food is actually takeout containers. So that's your takeout food that you get to keep those containers, and that's what you use, which I agree, and that's what I use. So anytime I get, like, any of those prepared meals, Mm -hmm. like those little dishes that those come in are amazing for meal prepping, and I'll use those to to put my meals in throughout the week. So when I go to work, I can just grab one of those. And the containers that um, Asian food, Chinese food, like pho and stuff come in, I use those as well. And the nice thing about those, is that if you send somebody with leftovers, you don't have to worry about getting your very expensive Tupperware back. So a lot of places, including myself, like a lot of people are starting to use those. And come on, like, hasn't everyone had a grandmother that's like sent you home with leftovers and an old old margarine container? Uh, Pro tip. Yeah. The I use the Gidry seasoning a lot, like the Cajun seasoning. Yeah, that's one of I the use those a lot there. and I reuse the heck out of those containers all the time. There's also uh I I, I cannot remember the name brand. I, like when you mentioned it earlier, I like wanted to Google it, but I don't have my phone with me, obviously. Uh but the uh, at Super One, I don't think they sell them anywhere else, but at Super One, if you're like uh for instance, if you're at the Super One in Scott. It is at the end of the aisle with the frozen fish. Okay. Uh, They are like, I I don't know why they're there, but they're like separate from all the other plastic containers. And they're, uh, they're about like two cup size. And they've got these super snappy, hard lids. And I've been telling everybody about them because I made chili two weeks ago. And and I bought some on the fly and I put it in there and I dropped one. Uh, as I was like putting the, putting them in the refrigerator, and that thing stayed sealed shut. It was amazing. Okay. I've been telling everybody like, go to the section it's at the end of the aisle with the frozen fish. <laughs> just grab some. Get I it promise there. you, they were like three bucks for like eight of them in oh, there. Oh wow, that's like not bad. it was amazing. So worth a buy if you've got things that you need to keep in small containers. All right, we are going to take another break, and when we come back, we have more with Terry. So come back to us. It's the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk ninety six five KPL. The best tasting radio show in all of South Louisiana. It's the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPL. Hell. 
Welcome back to the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPL. I'm your host, Tiffany Deku, and guest co-host tonight has been Terry Duga with the Greater Iberia Chamber of Commerce. We have been recapping Thanksgiving, holiday foods. Now we're going to talk about croissants, mm. uh, most specifically that I'm going to be making them from scratch next week, and I'm terrified. So I've been doing this baking challenge throughout the holidays where I've been using my grandmother's recipes, not all of her recipes, but kind of just baking on a weekly basis. And I was going through on Sundays is typically when I bake, but I baked early this week because of Thanksgiving. So I was going through to determine what I was going to make this week. And I had pulled out a couple of things and I couldn't really decide. And I was going to put them on Facebook and let, you know, people decide what they wanted. Well, um, I was like, man, I was like, nanny, I was like, if you, if you want me to make something, I was like, you really need to like point out a recipe to me that you, you want me to make. So I got to the bottom of the box and it was her, um, breads, her breads recipe section. And I noticed that one of the page was dog eared. So I was like, okay. So I opened it up. And it was croissants. <laughs> and I was like, of course. A message from the great people. Which I had came across one of those videos on social media a while back where they made croissants. That recipe took two days. It had like seven layers, not even seven, 27 layers. Oh, and wow. it had butter like in each layer yeah because isn't that what you do like you just like keep folding right. the dough and adding well and butter. that one looked super it looked easy but it looked time consuming and yeah. it was like so much like you you would fold like you fold it and then it had to go back in the in the freezer and you not the freezer the fridge and you fold it and it went back like yeah. it took it literally took two days Man. to make so <laughs> i when i saw it i was like uh, but this recipe is not as intricate mm -hmm. uh so we'll see i'm kind of terrified uh i have not made i think the only time i've made bread from scratch i ha I used to have a bread machine mm -hmm. and that's what i called making bread from scratch and really it was not yeah um but the la i made bread from scratch when i was in high school and it didn't rise um, and my grandmother was like, yeah, like yeast is funny like that. You know, it's kind of difficult. And she's an amazing, like she made the most amazing bread. And then my dad was asking for zucchini bread. Like he loved her zucchini bread recipe. Mm -hmm. And in that same book booklet, I found the zucchini bread. Oh, well, so I'm going to make that for him on in another location. But yeah, so I'm going to be attempting croissants next weekend. I mean, that's weekend. really cool and I'm, though. I'm like, kind of scared. I think it should be. An interesting experiment, like experiment, you know, and then on top of that, it's not like you have to get it perfect the first time. Right. Try it out. And that's See kind of happens. like what I'm learning to you. Like, it's okay to mess up. Yeah. Uh, it's more about like the process exactly. of it than, you know, it coming out perfectly. And Although then, there is something to be said for the feel feeling of mastering a recipe the like the first time yeah because of when we started this my first thing i made was like pumpkin chocolate chip bread mm. nailed it <laughs> like it was amazing you know so it set the bar high yeah and then i've kind of like had some mishaps here and there um this one i'm terrified well i mean like you know you try it out see what happens you know make sure you add plenty of butter and then when you perfected it i would like some ones filled with Nutella. Right. Um. I was actually thinking about doing <laughs> some Nutella. That's, I was going to yeah. do some with chocolate. When I lived it. in Italy, we used, like, they used to have, yeah. like, croissant-esque bread with, uh, Nutella in the middle. Um. I forgot what they call yeah, it amazing. when it's not shaped like a croissant, but it is still a croissant. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of times I'll call croissants, but they're square. Yeah. And they're filled with chocolate. But that's like, that's not Is technically. Is it like Palm du Chocolat or something yes. like that? Yeah. Yes. And yeah. then it's called like different things too. And yeah. they're actually German, not French. <laughs> or, uh, yeah, they are German. It's like uh, from Vienna because mm -hmm. it was like uh, Marie Antoinette brought that over. Like, and she's uh, from Vienna. So, yeah. So it's that. It's technically that style, but it's. French now at this point, going into the history of Bread and croissants chocolate, <laughs> match made in heaven. on the on the sly there, <laughs> but yeah, so that so that'll be interesting. We'll see what happens. We'll be talking about it on next week's show, so oh, yeah. we'll see what happens. 
Also, if you're wondering what the best peanut butter out there brand out there is, Bon Appetit says the best peanut butter brand is Smucker's Natural Peanut Butter, which I have to say is a pretty tasty peanut yeah, butter. What yeah. it, what would you say your favorite is? Uh, I don't know. I bounce between different ones. Like I don't. I'm not someone who spends a lot of money on peanut butter, so I'm not going to be at like Whole Foods doing the churning machine or something. See, like that. I like Rouse's does a peanut chocolate yeah, mixture, yeah. and I love that. one. I mean, I've I've tried Rouse's like. You know, and all of their stuff, and it's good. It's really good. I just, I, I don't have the income. To I'm a more a fan of that. almond butter. Uh, yeah, I like almond. And you butter can go a and lot. get a giant thing at Costco for a reasonable price. <laughs> the only thing with the natural peanut butter is they taste better, but like that thick thing of oil at the yeah. top, and you have to stir Stirring them in, every yeah. time you eat them. It gets a little frustrating. When I went to Trader Joe's a few weeks ago, they had a mixed nut butter, Mm -hmm. which was basically all the mixed nuts that you get mixed together. It wasn't that great. It it really tasted like almond walnut butter. It wasn't was not a fan. Uh huh. Was not a fan of that, and I was really surprised. Have you ever tried the Peter Pan like honey roasted peanut butter? Uh, probably not since I was a child. Yeah, that one's delicious. I love that one. I mean, and then, uh, like, I grew up with, like, uh, Extra Crunchy Jiffy. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I, I used mean, to like the Extra Crunchy, too. Which I have people who will fight me about, like, the fact that I like crunchy peanut butter. And I'm like, I don't understand what's the matter with you. What's really already eating peanut butter. crazy is if you get the crunchy natural peanut butter, which is, like, yeah. very difficult to eat. It's wild. I don't, yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that one. But the Jiffy one, I feel like the peanut sizes are, are good and fine and... It tastes smooth, and it's got, like, that little bit of sweetness in it. Like, I like it a lot. I don't know. Maybe yeah. it's just me. We got on the topic of, I saw this article, and I was like, let me mention it, because I'm actually going to be making my dog dog treats, too. I'm trying to get her. To, she had been very sick, and she lost a lot of weight, so I'm trying to get her to put back on weight. And I found this recipe for super easy recipe for dog treats, which is, like, peanut butter, oats, and cinnamon Mm -hmm. and then you just like put it into balls and you like freeze it and i mean people can technically eat it too i don't know how great it's gonna taste but um i I was like i'm gonna get that for her but i I did not i did not get the nice stuff we got we got the cheap (laughs) peanut butter for the dog in fact i got it at walmart and i got like the walmart brand and Mm -hmm. i was kind of upset because it was still i was like i could go to the dollar tree and get like dollar tree peanut butter for this but yeah you know, it, I mean, I feel like, you know, cinnamon, oats, and peanut butter, that, that sounds like the beginnings of a really good, like, bar. Of my grandmother makes these no-bake oatmeal, chocolate oatmeal peanut butter cookies mm-hmm. that are, she makes them for Christmas. And in fact, for, like, she'll send us home with, with a, a container of it for Christmas that are delicious. Yeah. They but it has like a that. lot of sugar in it. So these are <laughs> so if you're trying to be like more health conscious, maybe yeah. the, these will be your version of the cookies or dog treats, you know, <laughs> whatever. Either or. Whatever. Whatever floats your boat. Exactly. Whatever works for you. <laughs> so it was announced this morning that Acadia and a Superette under co owner Toby Rodriguez is closing. Yeah. And I don't know if they're gonna continue to stay open at all. Or if they're closed completely, um, I'm kind of shocked because I thought that they were doing really well with him taking over. Like yeah. the, his plate lunches were really good. I didn't even get to go get over there and try the boudin. Yeah. Um, I've I've heard nothing but good things about his boudin, and I, I'm really kind of shocked. Yeah, I mean, I guess sometimes you know things happen beyond our control. Did you get um, to... Tr- no, I never yeah. got to. I never got to. I had meatball stew, and it was delicious. I mean, sometimes it seems like things, you know, start back up or open back up or or continue on. But, like, you know, you try to get over there, and then by the time you, you know, even it even gets on your radar, they're already gone. So. Well, Terry, thank you so much for joining tonight as no guest problem. co-host. This has been fun, as <laughs> always. I'll try to get you a nugget tray one of these days. Thank you. All right, that's <laughs> that's our show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Join us next week, Sunday at 6 p.m. This is Tiffany Deku on News Talk 96.5 KPL, and this is the Lafayette Food Junkie Show. Thanks for listening, and as always, happy eating, Acadiana.